Hello, 3Designers. I'm Joshua St. John, 3Design NYC on the forum, and this is the video demonstration series. This video demonstration is called Let's Get Ready to Render. We've been having a lot of requests for a rendering demo, and I've held off because it's a complicated issue and wasn't sure of how to approach it. What I've decided to do is I've prepared a VTF file that you need to download off of the forum. It's called New Rendering Lab. VTF. Once you've downloaded that VTF, you can follow the, along in this demo, and it should give you a good sense of how the rendering module in 3Design works. So let's not waste any time and hop right into the program and start off by opening up the Pave Solitaire Ring from the last video demonstration series. Okay, so um, we're in the 3Design workspace. I have opened up the Pave Solitaire ring that we made in the last installment of the video demonstration series. Now, today we are going to prep this file for rendering. So, the first thing that we need to do, if we look closely, these stones overlap with the prongs and they also may overlap with the ring itself. In order for a rendering to work properly, we need to prep the file properly, and we can't have transparent materials overlapping with opaque materials, because that messes up the way in which the computer is able to calculate the reflections of the stones. So, the first thing that I'm going to do is I'm going to make some cutters. If I look in my tree, I have... Um, a stone here. If you don't have a stone, you can just make a new one. But I'm going to use that stone and go to the jeweler's bench and make a cutter. Now this is a special cutter. This cutter is for rendering purposes. So I want to bring the angle in like this at the top to cut the, cut the notch for the prong. And the depth can go like so. Once I validate, you'll see what I mean. I can actually hide the stone now, and I have this cutter. Now, where are my positions? Let's hide the stones quickly and look in their history. I have jeweling one, and I have two positions. So let's try jeweling to just one position first, like so. Perfect. So this is the top. Now, if you look in jeweling, I can go to the second tab here and type in a scale factor of 110%. See how the uh, the cutters all grew? We can validate there and we'll do it to the other pave notch. So we go to the history here, grab that cutter, and then grab that pave and choose jeweling again. Gets it on the side. And we'll go to scaling 110% again and validate. Great, now I'm going to go to the solid module and I'm going to do a Boolean subtraction. One, there we go, Boolean subtract. Great, now let's zoom in and see what we did. See how we put the notch right there so now we know for certain that the stone and these holes and these prongs are not overlapping let's do it again on the top do a subtraction perfect and um, so if you look now we've done the same subtraction out of all of these prongs now um, th those type of boolean operations can be time consuming it really boils down to your computer's processing power and also to the complexity of your geometry and the cleanliness of your geometry. Now uh, I won't speak exactly what I mean about cleanliness but I hope from a previous video demonstration series you begin to see what efficient constructions are and, and what the inefficient constructions are. But uh, here we are and we've got the notches cut out and I'm going to boolean these prongs onto the ring. and then make one last cutter using the center stone creating a new cutter just the same way I did the first one bring it down like so validate there
and we'll subtract the cutter from the ring. I'll show my stones again. And this ring is ready for rendering. So the only thing that's left to do is group it all together. using the group tool and we'll call it the render ring. So uh, render ring versus production ring, there, there's definitely uh, differences here. We see that the notches are cut out, perhaps the prongs are shorter, they're bent over, maybe you filleted a few extra edges to take away some extra material. So I just want to really illustrate the fact that when 3D modeling, at a certain point in your product development, you hit a fork in the road. The left-hand side goes to production, sprueing, rapid prototyping, you know, pro production geared activities, and the other goes to rendering activities, which lends itself to marketing and advertising. And with rendering, you want everything to look as though the ring has been finished. And with production, you want to give yourself all of the tolerances that you need in order to create a ring that looks like the rendering. Okay, so now I have a group together. Um, I missed a piece, so I'm going to just hit the plus sign there, add it. And then lastly, I'm going to export as a SMB right here. That's our symbol file. It's a 3Design specific file, and it automatically opens up the symbol directory. So I'm going to call it Pave Solitaire. And then I get to choose the picture I want to take, like so. That looks great. And validate. All right, so the next step of this rendering exercise, we are going to go and open up off of the desktop the VTF we all downloaded called New Render Lab. Great, so now we are in the new Render Lab VTF that we downloaded from the forum, and as you can see, there is a stone in the center. That stone will be important later because it's carrying uh, a material with it that's new and not in the general material library. So before even looking at rendering, let's uh, double click on the part and step out of the rendering uh, studio and pull up our symbols library and as you can see my pave solitaire is here but you may have to hit refresh and that will bring up the pave solitaire for you now if we double click that it's gonna get brought into the workspace so in general this is how I go about uh, preparing my renderings I, I bring them into the rendering lab rather than bringing the rendering lab into the file that I made the construction in so I validate there, and we know that this is the uh, the ring that we prepared. All the booleans are subtracted, and the prongs are bent, and it's pretty much ready for rendering. So I'm going to minimize the part and double-click back on the rendering, and it's going to bring us into the rendering lab. So let's take a look at what we have here. Results, we have none. Shapes. All right. So under shapes, we have ground gradient dome the camera uh, simulate shadows camera locations the reference object and lights the first thing that we're gonna do is click on the piece itself and use the set material paintbrush icon and we're going to paint this uh, ring some different colors let's do Platinum, that's under new material, precious metal, and platinum there. Okay, so we've changed that to platinum. And the next, I want to change all the stones. So I'm going to select all, hold control, and unselect the, uh, the ring. That's the easiest way to select all stones. Now, if we go down to local, 
Local means materials that are available in this file. So if we look here, we have new white diamond. New white diamond is the material that I want to use. So I'm going to double click there and voila. So it looks the same, but these new white diamonds are different. And uh, one of our power users, Dave Watt, worked really, really hard on kind of optimizing the diamond so we get the reflections that we want. So that's what we've done. We've switched the regular diamond material for this new white diamond material and changed the other, uh, changed the ring to platinum instead of gold. So I'm going to hide that stone. And now we'll start talking about some of the aspects of this rendering lab. If we open up reference object, you're going to see that the stone is the reference object. So let's double click back on stone and trash the stone as the reference object and change it to the set material that we just laid down. And the reason we did the set material first is now if we wanted to change the material, we wouldn't have to go and change the reference object after. I could just click on set material and change this to, let's say, 18 karat yellow, and we'd be good to go. But I, I want to keep it as platinum and validate there. Recalculate, and we're good. Now, by doing that, the ring is automatically placed exactly on... The, the ground that we're using. And also, if you look, the Simulate Shadows reference object is the reference object. So the reference object is the set material. The set material is the imported object. The set, the Simulate Shadows is the reference object. I hope that all makes sense. So now we're pretty much ready to go. Let's take a look at one of the camera locations. All right, and we'll set it at uh, 1280, 1040. That's a pretty decent resolution for what we're doing. Obviously, the smaller the resolution, the faster the rendering and the less the quality. So let's just render this one out quickly and see what we get. We're going to click on camera location, and then we're going to click on create a rendering. And then we will hit render. Okay, and there you have it, our first render. So let's validate that. And now take a look at the results bag. We have create a rendering. So now if I was to look at that, it is that rendering we just made. So we can rename it first render. If I right click on that and export it to the desktop as a JPEG, save, now minimize, and there it is on my desktop.